runner on the ground immediately. To contest the opening bounce of the 1977 Grand Final, John Spire, Port Adelaide and Wayne Phyllis of the Bays. Hodgman, it bays into attack, kicking towards the lake end. Port Adelaide won the toss, Michael Farquhar. Good mark in the opening seconds. Port Adelaide won the toss and kicked to the golf course end or the southern end, very little breeze. Perfect conditions, a capacity crowd. Farquhar in towards full forward, Kerry sets himself. Play on is the call, Port Adelaide kick clear through Cunningham. The outer side, Warren out there. And the free kick will go the way of Graham Corns or it's Ivan Eckerman in the scene there. It's a free kick to Glenelg. It'll be taken once more by Michael Farquhar on the half forward line. And we see the ball going in the opposite direction. Umpire Peter Mead has seen an infringement in the goal square and he's taken the ball away from Michael Farquhar and given it to Eckerman on the half back line. Ivan Eckerman's kick goes over centre wing where the pack sets again. The whistle blows and marks Page Graham Corn. Centre wing out of side. Glenelg back into the forward line again. Not a long kick. Big Randall Gerlach. Gerlach almost a centre half back. He takes the kick. Plenty of tension. Across the centre of the ground. Greg Phillips out there, well up from full back. He's a long way out of the full back ground. Players very towing. Johnson, 15 metre penalty. Just forward of the centre now. Phillips drives Port Adelaide up towards the forward pocket. The Glenelg Gans couldn't take it. Rexy Voigt. Close to the boundary. Brian Cunningham sees the ball over the line on the ball and he'll get the free kick. Routed forward line for Port Adelaide. Kale on the lead. Evans now on the lead. Freddie Phyllis took the mark but received the free kick prior to the mark being made. In the back pocket as he takes the kick. Phyllis coming grandstand side. A nice looking drop punt. Wayne Phyllis has set himself spry. An important battle between those two players today. Even in for Port Adelaide. Light. Cunningham on the half forward line. Port Adelaide into attack again. Up towards Evans. Phyllis in front, Evans almost pulled down a great mark. James conceding ground, Caldwell coming in to claim that player. Fry overruns it. Highwood out the radi, but in the meantime, a free kick has gone the way of Port Adelaide. David Holt's friend straight past the ball and took John Spry on face to face. Spry in the big square, puts it out in front of Sorrell. Big leap at the back of the pack there, Weston. Free kick. Weston disposed of when he didn't have the ball. And he'll get the free kick. About 30 metres out from the goal line. Now going towards the lake end. And he pushes it out towards the centre wing. Again, Port Adelaide moving forward. Melton gets the bad bounce. Kale was there. Back to Paul Melton. And it goes short by Trevor Sorrell. 45 to 50 metres from goal. With the breeze behind him. Still a tricky angle. First shot at goal. What could be the first score. Comes off the right hand side of the boot. The accuracy not there. The mark taken. The mark to David Granger. The right forward pocket. And again a very tight angle for Port Adelaide to shoot from. David Granger starting at centre-half forward for the Magpies. There was plenty of speculation about who would line up there against the talented Paul Weston. David Granger got the pack. Will he justify the selectors' faith in him? Kicks for goal and misses it, but the first score of the match on the board for the Magpies. One point. Tension is terrific, Ted. Obviously, the players can feel it as well, but the big crowd, capacity crowd, at fever pitch for this grand final. Coach John Cale. Can he get it this year after a, an unsuccessful bid last season? The kick in by Phyllis to the outer side. Wayne Phyllis, brother, great mark. Strong mark in the pack. On the half-back line. Continues down the outer side, looking for Carey. 
Edged out, Peter Woyd in defence. He's at centre wing at the moment. Port Adelaide centre half back now. Screws a magnificent kick towards his half forward line. Wayne Phillips back there again. One, two, grab. Sorrell over the top, lights in. But Hodgman comes away. Comes right across goal. Western it was. Towards Warren. And Warren gets the free kick. Well, Glenelg showing more signs of nerves at the moment to me, Ian. They're giving away free kicks when they could be perhaps going into attack. There's a poor kick from Warren. Steve Highwood gets booted the ball. He's had grand final experience. And Tim Hodgman's there to accept it. Quickly into attack, looking for Carey. Phillips almost pulled it down. His opponent, Coppy, gets the chance to go goalward. In towards the goal square. Pate can't get there in time. Hits the ground. Hannon for Port Adelaide. A beautiful tackle put on him by Farquhar. Pate's intercepted now. Kinnear's there. Out in front of Hannon again. Kinnear dealt with after the ball is gone. And Twiggy called well the offender. Tim Kinnear to take the kick in the back pocket for Port Adelaide. Port Adelaide with the only score on the board at the moment. One point, Connell gets the score. Kick going back to Kinnear, the Port Adelaide wingman who's come deep in defence to help his defenders get the ball out of that back pocket. Kinnear directs play towards the outer side. Gee, that's a magnificent kick from a player not very tall. Tap back, McInerney in the action. Ebert. Throws it out towards Kale. Has to meet the bodies heavily. Has won the free. Did it well. Daryl Kale from Techside of centre. Has belt running clear. Techside of centre. Cunningham in the forward pocket. Stretches for the ball and takes a good mark. Light is short. Into the pocket goes Sorrell. But he's putting it up for the big hands of Tim Evans. Sets himself in the square. Big mark almost over the top by Cause. Here's a chance for Evans if he can pick it up. Phyllis overruns it. The Bay's defending desperately through Herco, Corns, McInerney, and they come out of defence to Caldwell. Caldwell on the half-back flank as he brings the ball clear and fires it up the centre wing. Hodgman from behind, pulls in the mark and then plays on quickly. Glenel prepared to go into attack. Hake and Gerlach, the ball brought the ground. Farquhar goes goalwards, goes to goal and makes no mistake in the first page of the game on the board to Michael Farquhar. Glenel's one goal, Port Adelaide one point at the ball from half-back, rebounded. Through centre wing, carried forward by smaller player Hodgman, into the forward line, off the hands of the big fellows that came, and Michael Farquhar driving towards goal, made no mistake, and got the first one for Grinnell. They lead by five points, six points to one. John Nichols, obviously happy with his teenager's performance. Spry and Phyllis, Rye grabs the ruck. Out in front of Johnson, gets a bad bounce. Light, Chris Port Adelaide into attack. Rex Boyd coming back after a bad knock. Gets the ball back towards centre wing. He's been flattened. He has been flattened on the half-back line. A free after disposal. Rex Boyd in the wars in recent weeks, but the free upfield will go to Darrell Brady. Granger was the offending player. It would be no surprise uh, if he's been reported, Ian. Brady's kick is high towards the half-forward line. Ball to ground. Spry out in front of the running Hannon. And in the half-back line to James. Port Adelaide going to attack. Puts it up for Evans. Can't grab it. He's got the ball now. Into the open goal. And Port Adelaide have got their first goal on the ball. Well, the ball was taken quickly down the ground as Spry got out the handball. James strode into attack. Evans came to meet the ball, but all the pressure in the world was put on him. But as the ball rebounded off the bay defence, he grabbed it again and strode into the open goal. And Port Adelaide have hit the front here at the nine minute mark of the first quarter. Port Adelaide 1-1, one, one, seven points, but they one goal, six. You're with Channel 7 on the big replay. Nine minute mark and Glenelg trail by a point at the moment. Page tap away, the follow through to McInerney, waited too long but evades the tackle. Now Glenelg over half forward into the forward pocket. Hannon with a fist away, the ball back to Hodgman, Farquhar cleverly tapped it. Set up now for Copping in the forward pocket. He's got Wayne Phillips loose in the pot, loose in the goal square. He's also got Carey loose, but oh, he goes short. Cannon intercepts. Golden opportunity for the Bays when begging. Cannon makes no mistake. Down towards centre wing. Corns couldn't complete the grab. Pulse took Ebert out of it. Allowed Corns back in. McInerney, Ebert through. Strength got him by. Finds Pukleisha. Out in front of Bruce Light, he's hotly pressed. 
Brady came down, follows the ball along, over half back. Bruce Light and David Johnson go together. And I think there's a report. Bruce Light supported. David Johnson was defended against player, but Brady takes the kick. Goes in short and finds Rexy Boy. Just shows the tremendous tension in this game, Ted. Could have been two reports, most certainly one. The kick to the half forward line. Wait there. Fake in front. Fake has been paid the mark on the half forward line. The base into attack once more. Trailing by the point. Carey sets himself, but he doesn't get the run at the ball. Comes to him now. Hooks it round to the open spaces. If it sits for coughing, he must get a goal. He slips. Runs round Ackerman. Hook back towards goal. I think he's missed. Out of bounds on the full. Stephen Coffey, hands up in despair. The ball just wouldn't sit. When he did pick it up, he slipped. And Port Adelaide's got out of what seemed to be a certain goal against them. Len Warren to take the kick. Just clears the pocket, looking for Peter Woit. But over that player's head. Spry and Phyllis and Gerlach there in support for the Magpies. Phyllis front position. McInerney, the bays up towards the goal front area, Phillips, the fist away, Gerlach, good trap, all puts Light in plenty of trouble, he loses it, Coffey, out into the open, Twiggy Caldwell, a snap at goal, has it got the legs, players in front, Cheryl Rady, desperate Emmett, but just as desperate Glenn Warren, forced behind, Connell 1-1, tied away the scores with Port 1-1, seven points apiece, the 12 minute mark. Greg Phillips goes to the outer side with a drop punt. Caldwell out there, but a great mark by Max James. Typical James performance on the half back line at the moment. Forwards the ball to the outer side. The ground. Highwood in defence. Claimed by Paul Fleischer. Free kick Stephen Highwood. A half-back flanker from that half-back flank position will go come towards the centre of the ground. Wayne Phyllis sets himself. Gerlach in attendance, but Phyllis has been paid the mark. Dreaming into attack as Leo on the half-forward line. The Bays now go forward once more into the pocket on the lead. Coughing, but can't make it. And the ball goes out of play in the full forward left pocket. Still seven points apiece. Twelve and a half minutes played this first term. Jack Spry and Peter Carey this time, the rough and the play. Carey stepped down, but in doing so, interfered with the try. Spry taking plenty of time. Finally goes down towards half-back flank. In the hand, Paul Fleischer, well smothered. Cunningham, the kick away, Rexy Boy. Streams into attack, lets it go, drops in short. Peter White with a fist away from Carey. He's got the big job of mining Carey. Holst with a kick towards the forward pocket. In front, Phillips. Dealt with, did not uh, have true possession of the ball. Greg Phillips. Kick drop short. And the mark taken by Kim Kinnear. He's on the half-back flank. Searches for the lead of Andy McLeish. Finds him. Still not up to the centre line. Forwardy kick. Up towards the flank, and there's a free kick to go the way of Gerlach. A bit interference in the pack. Gerlach's kick towards the lead of Evans. He marks it. Pretty Phyllis. Doesn't get there in time. And there's one grab specialist, Tim Evans. He's kicked one goal so far put the Magpies back in front. Scores are tied away as he kicks the ball. The kick walks to hit the top of the post and puts the Magpies one point only in front. One goal, two Port Adelaide, Spinell, 1-1. Phyllis, coming grandstand side, obviously considered to be the dead pocket. Carey sets himself, big mark. The genial Giants on the half back line forwards the ball towards the centre of the ground, looking for Wayne Phillips, front position, tries to hook it back. Spry, Phillips, the long kick into attack for Port Adelaide once more. Western in defence for the Bays. 
under pressure. Heavy tackle then by Granger, forces Weston to kick the ball out of play on the full. Max James on the half-forward right flank would be too far out to score. No doubt we'll look for the lead of Tim Evans. Puts it out in front of that player now. Phyllis there, right with him. Evans can't get his hands to the ball over the back of the pack. It's Highwood. Runs into trouble, goes to ground. The long handball comes out towards Johnston, deep in defence for the Bays. Hooks it back towards his half-back line. For Fischer. Can't hold it. Light tries to wind his way through. Holding the ball, and the free kick goes to Tim Hodgman. Tim Hodgman just behind the half-back line as he takes the kick. 15 minutes and not a great deal of score on the board so far. Eight points Port Adelaide and seven points Glenelg. Goes short in towards Jimmy Lee, who doesn't gain a lot of yardage. Lee, whose kick goes towards half forward, but it's misdirected. Peter Wolf. Drive towards centre half forward. Granger drops back. Kale was there. Granger, both the Port Adelaide players go to ground. Four Weston. Finally gets the ball to Voigt. Highwood. Well, beautifully shepherded Jim Lee Hu and Stephen Highwood gets clear kick towards the half forward. Gerlach. Good mark, Randall Gerlach. Had the run of the play. Pate went with him, but the big man from Port Adelaide was in front. Just a jack side of centre wing. Transfers play towards his half forward line. Over the top left for Max James. Two spectacular marks in the opening minutes of the game. And a 15 metre penalty against Stephen Highwood will bring James now to within easy kicking distance. James towards the golf course end. 35 metres out. Drop part underway. Umpire starting to move for the ball, but he's going to get through. Second goal to Port Adelaide. And the Magpies lead now 2-2 to Glenelg 1-1. You're viewing the big replay on Channel 7. Port Adelaide with a seven-point lead at the 17-minute mark of the first term. I've just about shared the play with Glenelg, but they've made a bit more, uh, taken a bit more really off their opportunities up forward. Max James showing that he's going to be a thorn in the Glenelg side. Gerlach having a run on the ball. Phyllis gets the touch. Hodgman streaking out of the centre square. A long one in towards the forward pocket. Coffin getting across. Couldn't bring it down. In defence, Ackerman. Annan running the ball out of defence. Goes towards centre wing. Here's a chance now for Belton. The Magpies into attack again. Out in front there of David Granger. Herco close in attendance and the ball fumbled out of play. Ruckman's forced to work again. This time it'll be Phyllis and Randall Gerlach. Wayne Phyllis, Randall Gerlach. Fourteen points to seven, Port Adelaide leads. Gerlach hooks the ball over the top of the pack, but Noddy Voigt was there. He finds Stephen Holst from the centre line. Glenel goes deeper to their exact attacking zone. Greg Phillips in front, doesn't pull it down. Bob Pate keeps the ball running for him. Comes up now, he gets boot the ball and he's still through. But four points, the big fellow certainly kept the ball running. And what a good effort from one of the tallest players on the ground. Linnell now back within one point as that ball came down from the centre from David Holt's kick over the back of the pack. Bob Pate kept running. First time he went to get it, couldn't do so, but then did and steered it through from a bleak angle for Glenelg's second goal. 2-1 Glenelg, Port 2-2. Bay camp looking very, very pensive indeed. Great deal of pressure. Gerlach, big fist towards Granger. Weston knocks it away. A chance for Voigt to clear. Overruns the ball. Kale in. Weston back on the ball. Gets the kick out to Twiggy Caldwell at centre wing. Caldwell just the defence side of centre wing. Weston starts to run for him. Puts it out in front of the centre half back. Back, we're looking to set up the loose man. He shepherds well. The kick in towards full forward. Peter White in defence, well clear. In command of the situation as he drives the ball back towards the centre circle. Wayne Phyllis there. Bays first recover. Out to Johnson. High towards full forward. All Port Adelaide back there. Caught from the side. Warren over the top. But coming out of defence, it's Phyllis. Goes long out towards centre wing. Bruce Light will have two Glenelg players to compete with. 
tries to keep it running. David Johnston's pace gets him in a good position. Boyd anticipated beautifully. Up further looking for McInerney. Over his to Rady. McInerney ran into the open space. Kicks long towards the goal square. Carey's there in front of the pack. It's Bob Pate who kicks the last goal for the base. And that was a beautiful movement to set up when Bruce Light was outnumbered. Noddy Boyd ran the risk. Played positive football. Set up the loose chain. And the two rovers between them, Rady and uh, McInerney, saw the ball into the goal square for Pate to take the mark. Bob Pate makes no mistake. His second goal and Glenelg's third. Glenelg, three goals, one lead for Adelaide. Two goals, two at the 20-minute mark of the first turn. Well, at the moment, it's Wayne Phyllis who's on top in the ruck doing a tremendous amount of good work, tapping the ball down to the smaller players and helping the Bays run the ball in to attack. They've got away to a good start. They're kicking against any breeze, although the breeze is not going to have a great deal of effect in this game here this afternoon. Centre bounce. Max James tears his way through the pack, sends in a magnificent kick towards the goal front. It clears the boundary line on the ball. My gee, if that had been online, Freddie Phillips would have had his work cut out to stop that. So yeah, that breeze looks to be going the way Port Adelaide are kicking to me. Yes, what I said, the, uh, the base kicking into the breeze in that first quarter, Ted. It's not very strong, though. Wayne Phillips. Wayne Phillips again pulls down the mark. Acting captain for the base today in the absence of Peter Marker. And the rumour is he may be playing his last game. Towards centre wing. From behind, Peter Boyd tried to spoil with Carey and two could have on the ball. Carey at centre wing. Brady on the half forward line asked for the ball to be delivered towards him. He's going to have to set up to go hard, but it's Warren who reads the ball. It's not. Brady in there now. Players go in hard. Warren comes out with it. Goes long to the half forward line, but it's all Carey back there who takes the mark. Phillips at centre wing. The Bay strong man. Boots him into attack, finds Caldwell at centre half forward. Slightly towards the half forward left flank. Coughing on the half forward right flank, looking for the ball, but Caldwell going in longer. The magnificent drop punt to the edge of the square. Corns over the back. Ball to ground, coughing. Kale in there, Corns. Slipped out the ball. Last oh, one on the last line by Len Warren. Warren, kick away. Sees all Bay players there, and it's Wayne Phillips, but he drops it. Back to Kerry. David Holt goes goalward now, sets it up, giving it the right direction, and he's made no mistake. And there's Spinell recovering for the drop mark from Wayne Phillips. The ball to the bottom of the ground, back towards Kerry. The hand pass was good. David Holt went in goalwards, made no mistake, and kicked his first goal in Glenelg's fourth. The 22 minute mark, Glenelg. Four goals, one lead. Port Adelaide, two goals, two. Now it's Port Adelaide's turn to look worried. Assistant coach Jeffrey Potter, reserve Bletham and Giles. Carl Fragamini, the injured player on the other side. Kale looking for a move now as the bounce goes down at the centre. Pate gets a tap to McInerney. The Bays into attack once more. Wayne Phyllis there. He'll come up with the ball. Looks for support. Gets it from Brady. The bounce put aside. Ten metres out. Ducks the tackle, drives the goal, but he's just offline for one point. An excellent opportunity. He set himself up, but couldn't quite convert. Well, Glenelg in the last five or six minutes have been first into the ball, and they've made that ball really sing down the ground, and they're giving Ford plenty of hurry up. Even winning the toss and kicking to the southern end. The breeze favouring that end. Now Phillips. Kick in season mark by Graham Corns on the half forward flank for the Bays. Moves quickly towards Hodgman. He went through. Too late to spoil the mark. Kim Hodgman, centre half forward. Seventh kick for Kim Hodgman coming up. 24 minute mark on the first turn. 14 points for Sunning Glenelg, 26 points. Hodgman. Sees the lead on from Carey. Peter Woods from behind and Carey too strong in the air. And only 25 metres out directly in front. Peter Carey sends the ball on its way and has made no mistake. His first goal for the match is Linnell Smith and the Linnell fans go mad. It's Linnell's move on to five goals too. Leading 
Port Adelaide, two goals to a clear margin of three goals to Glenelg as we move into the time on series. Well, at the moment, there's more run in the Bay players' legs. They're making position well going through the half-forward line. The Port Adelaide defence is being caught unaware, and the Bays have certainly started off in grand style in the 77 grand final. Centre bounce. The knock over towards Korn. The run on finds Hodgman towards the right half forward flank for the Bays. Tony Hannon leaves the ball behind. Recovery's good. Searches for Kim Kinnear. Port Adelaide to break away now into attack. Kinnear's kick. A lot of Port Adelaide uh, players well under the drop of the ball as Jimmy LaHue made no mistake. In the back pocket as he takes the kick. Into time on of the first quarter of the grand final. Spry from behind leaps. The ball forced out of play on the outer side. 5-2 Glenelg, 2-2 Port Adelaide. Good lead to the Bay, kicking into any breeze that there is in this first quarter. Pate makes front position. Corns gets a tremendous fist past Ackerman. But he backs up once more for Fisher. Forwards the ball towards their centre-half forward position at the back of the pack, waiting is Sorrell. Granger having trouble getting around. Back towards Sorrell, but it's Johnson all clear. David Holt. About to be run down by Light, but he gets clear. Brady in trouble. Scoops it out towards Johnson. Ebert putting in the supreme effort. Back to Light. He's clear at centre wing. Now the Magpies a chance to go on. Four one base. Behind the play, Holt and uh, Ebert mixing it up. And Holt Brady had a go at Ebert, and he came straight back at him, right in front of umpire Peter Mee. Brady limping badly at centre wing as well. Drama galore here in the 77 Grand Final. Could even be four reports in the first quarter. Ball out of play, full forward right pocket. Umpires getting plenty of work to do in the first quarter. Granger gets the tap, back towards the boundary line at all. Once more. Daryl Rady looks to be in real trouble. Round about the calf or the ankle. Yes, he's coming off. Sid Jackson about to take his place. Throw in, Pate, Granger, and another five tap over the boundary line. Been a lot of emphasis on the body in this first term and some spiteful incidents. Perhaps you couldn't put them all down to grand final nerves either, Ian. 5-2 Glenelg, 2-2 Port Adelaide. Rangers tap over the top is good. Hale sets up to the lead of Evans. Phyllis got good position. He loses the ball to James. Evans in again. Has Cunningham breaking loose, gets out of trouble. The snap goal went offline, 1.8. Two goals, three, 15 points, trail to Elk, 5-2, 32, 27 and a half minutes played in the first turn. Evans was under an enormous amount of pressure there. There was a couple of handballs going past. Uh, Cunningham badly wanted it. Port Adelaide in attack, not moving all that smoothly. Phyllis asking for the streamer to be taken away so as he can kick the ball back into play. Now the action commences again. Back towards the grandstand side. Kick dropping short. Daryl Cale. Inside half forward line. About 45, 50 metres out. Not confident making the distance. He's put it right across goal. Looking for Evans to leap. Makes it on the chest. Out in front of Phyllis. Couldn't get the run that he wanted. And Tim Evans has a chance to convert for Port Adelaide. And trailing by 17 points. Brady off the ground. Out of the arena, trailing by 17 points in this first quarter into time on. A goal is urgently needed by Port Adelaide. He drops it straight through. Goal number two to Tim Evans. At the three-minute mark of time on, Port Adelaide pull back. 3-3-21 to the Bays, 5-2-32. You're with Channel 7 on the big replay. 11-point margin in favour of Glenelg with only a couple of minutes at the most to play in this first term. Port Adelaide started okay and Glenelg had a really good session right in the middle of the quarter. Now can Port get back? For Fisher. Evans. Weston. Help. Shoots it towards goal. Evans won four. Great mark. Phyllis caught underneath the ball. Evans running with the flight. Felton it was the player that found him. Tim Evans being forced around onto the angle.
already has two. The eyes of the Port Adelaide fans right squarely on number five and with his fifth kick. He puts it straight through the middle for his third quarter. Third goal in his first quarter. A fine start by the Port Adelaide Ruckman and Port Adelaide now move on to 4-3 to Van Earl's 5-2. And there's only five points the difference in the grand final. Five points only the difference, and I wonder how many times we'll see scores as close as this for the rest of the three quarters, Ian. What a great start it's been, Ted. They're very two well-matched sides, aren't they? A fine first quarter. Tremendous effort by both teams. Spry and Carey at the centre bounds. And Carey seemed to put his hands in the middle of the back, but it went unpenalised. For Plesha, towards half-forward. Point out, light through. Both players fearless in their approach to the ball. Bruce White says he's way clear. As Paul Belt is clear, but uh, Graham Thorne's anticipated beautifully. Goes towards Carey in the centre. Eva drops back. Carey uses him as the step ladder. The quick play on by Carey. The Bay's into attack. Gerlach in the middle of the pack. Jackson trying to run it through. Phillips is there for the Port Adelaide side. Russell Ebert has the hand pass on, takes the body, and the follows through. Almost the centre wing. 32 minutes played now, 27 points for Charles and Elk, 32. Spry and Wayne Phyllis. Johnson. Hooks it back, Boyd. Can't quite pick it up, Jackson in. Cunningham. Has Kinnear clear, too far for that player. Belton gets the bad bounce. Boyd, a magnificent dash at the ball. Rebound magnificently. Copping. Oh, drops the sitter. Ball to play on. Gerlach. Eckerman. Boyd, Port Adelaide run the ball out of defence with a long kick from there. McGarry medalist centre half back and then Stephen Highwood who takes the mark as the siren ends the first quarter in the grand final and what a magnificent first quarter it was. At quarter time, the 5-2-32 lead Port 4-3-27. Well, Port Five points to difference as we start the second quarter here of the 77 grand final. Glenelg 5 2, Port Adelaide 4 3. The Port Adelaide kicking towards the lake end into any breeze that there is. Leffen is on the ground. Daryl Kale is having a spell at the moment. Kicks high in towards the forward area. Sorrell in front position. One, two grabs. Perko goes for the big fist. Barkwa back in defence. Finds Highwood with the hand pass. The Bay's a chance to come out. Long towards their half forward line. Carey sets himself. One hand to it. Can't complete it. Gerlach wanders his way through. Does well for the big man. Back towards the half forward line. Flatten there. Barkwa once more in defence gets the kick out towards the half back line. Caldwell, Thorne, clear in the forward pocket is Wayne Phyllis, and the pass is unhearing as it finds him about 35 metres out from goal on an angle. Five points only the difference, and Wayne Phyllis can make that 11 points. Tight angle, but he is a left footer, a breeze blowing virtually at his face. Help the kick come back, G gives it every chance. It's a good looking kick, but doesn't quite make the distance. Peter White first to the ball. Oops. Recovers. Now goes up towards the open spaces on the centre wing, but it's all Glenelg. David Johnson quickly tackled. Bruce Light there. Paul Belton has the ball knocked away by Hodgman. Kim Hodgman's kicked towards the forward pocket. Sid Jackson. Back on it is Jackson. Player set. White in front. Spoiled by Coppy, Eckerman number four. Opens up the way, but it's for McInerney of Glenelg. Back towards the goal square, Big Carey back there. Pulls in the mark on the chest, and by G did he position his body beautifully for that against the towering Randall Gerlach. Well, he had no real advantage in weight or size over Gerlach, and he did it beautifully, the big fellow. And Peter Carey makes no mistake. Knocks him. Goal number two for that player. Six kicks. Six marks, two goals, 
Linnell, six goals, two, 38 lead forward, 4 3, 27. Carey playing at centre half forward at the moment. Wheat then had to battle hard in the forward pocket, trying to defend for Port Adelaide. And whilst he went off chasing the ball, Carey just camped in the goal square, and the ball came in high from McInerney, and the big fellow pulled down a ripper and only was only about two metres out, thought about playing on, but decided that he couldn't miss by going back and put on his second in the Bay six goal. 6-2, Glenelg, 38, Port Adelaide, 4-3, 27. Spray and Pike to do battle in the centre, and as Pike's tap away, Twiggy Corwell traps, kick away, Len Warren. Port Adelaide move the ball towards their half-forward flank. Bleffin in front, he's held. Jeff Bleffin sat on the bench during the first quarter and has replaced Daryl Kale, who went off at quarter time in what may have been a recurrence of a groin injury. Who knows? Gee, there's a towering kick up the forward line. Pake sees the ball scrambled over the line. A good bump there from David Frank. Ted, I think that was fair indication just that the breeze is certainly not very strong out there because that kick must have covered all of 60, 65 metres and that was kicking into any breeze that there is. 6-2, Glenelg, 4-4, Port Adelaide. Freddie Phyllis to kick towards the grandstand side. Ten points the difference between these two sides with Glenelg leading. No mark taken. Ebert. Fine change. That player holding the ball. Bob Pate to take it. Kicks to his feet gingerly. He might have worn Max James' head on his thigh. Highwood took the kick. Quickly forwarded. Warren off the top of the pack. John Spry. Farquhar. Well held by Brian Cunningham. Johnson loses it to Ebert. Holst well shepherded. Down to the forward line. Evans spoiled out of it but tackled too high in that exchange. Phyllis and Evans exchanging pleasantries. Evans had three goals to date of Port Adelaide's four. Eckerman coming off for Port Adelaide. Tony Giles to have his first run of the final. Ivan Eckerman lifting off also. Gee, this grand final is taking its toll so far. With a sixth kick for Tim Evans, he's shooting for what could be his fourth goal. It's on the way. Goal umpire sees it through. Four goals to Tim Evans. Port Adelaide fifth, Port Adelaide five goals four, trail Glenelg six goals two, four points only the difference, five minute mark of the second term of this grand final and you're watching all the action on Channel 7, Big Replay. Fine effort by Tim Evans, four goals so early in the grand final, the leading goal kicker at the end of the minor round, his game has been featured by big strong one grab marks and uh, great accuracy in front of goals and he's standing one of the most experienced players in the game in Fred Phillips. Spry versus Wayne Phyllis. No clear tap away and a rebound. Wayne Phyllis. Big John Spry from Port Adelaide. This time Phyllis gets hand of the ball. Caldwell tears through. Fever keeps the ball running for Port Adelaide. Paul Belton, Bruce likes there, the hand pass is astray, but he's good enough to get the kick to the forward line. Trevor Sorrell can't bring it down with his great manageable reach on about 40 metres out from goal, a bounce necessary. 34 points for Adelaide, 38 for Nell. On the half forward line, the bounce. Weston goes for the base. McInerney in defence. On the outer side, Johnson is clear. Almost takes the mark. Light's about to claim that player. Call to play on. Johnson taken out of it by Belton. Ball out of play. Poor please and no, just keeps it in play. Back they go by Light. Into the pocket. Belton clear takes the mark. Port Adelaide now. Going into attack. Into the forward pocket. Looking for Evans. Can't quite get there. The ball goes over the fingers of both he and Phyllis. And runs through for the minor score. Port Adelaide now move on to 5-5, Glenelg 6-2. Three-point margin in favour of Glenelg as Freddie Phyllis once again kicks in and goes to the defensive grandstand win. Wayne Phyllis on the lead, the pack goes to ground completely. Kim Kinnear, Wayne Phyllis desperate in his endeavours, make sure that Kim Kinnear cannot break away. 
Almost up to the forward pocket before that, mate. Try and take him, take Corns rather, got his hand to it. David Holt comes through, pops one on the whiskers, and he'll get the free kick. Paul Pleasure, the offending player. David Holt, not quite to the half bank flank as he takes the kick. Steers it over the centre line. Off hands, fisted away by Warren. McInerney into the open spaces, Glenelg into attack. Hodgman with the pace to get there first, runs into trouble. McInerney in support, he is turned, is in trouble. My oh, gee, that was a cool tackle of Tony Hannon. He, uh, he could have made plenty of mistakes there, Ian. Hannon's kick is to the half forward line. Bleffen sets himself, almost pulls in the big one. Highwood in defence, Granger there as well, Western in. Highwood still grumbling after the ball. And a bounce down on the corner of the big square into the second quarter by eight minutes. 5-5, five, five, Port 6-2 the Bays. Nobody can get a ruck knock again. Blethen there, his own man holding it into him. In Big John's try, and Stephen Highwood made sure neither of them went anywhere. Peter Mead in control, and the bounce on the left half forward flank before that late. Graham Ford, but he's thinking about Andy Patricia. The run of the ball, Max James. The pace is good. The lead from Evans is good. Phyllis from behind. Nobody can get there. Hooked away by uh, Rexy Voigt. He overruns it. Goes to ground. Back onto it is David Granger. A snap at goal. And Brian Cunningham successfully takes the mark. Only about three metres out from goal and straight in front. Well, not quite in straight in front. He's being moved around on an angle now. Seventh kick coming up to Brian Cunningham. His first goal and Port Adelaide hits the front by three points. That goal coming. Port Adelaide 6 6 5, Port 6 2, Glenelg. Ball taken into the forward line and a good mark taken there by Brian Cunningham in the full, right in the goal square. And he nuts truly made no mistake. 6 5, Port Adelaide, Glenelg 6 2. Yeah, Clefham has added a bit of fight to the half forward line now. Port Adelaide starting to run. Even in control and centre. Paul Pleasure running. Port Adelaide looking a little better in the second quarter. Gerlach and Pake. And it's Pake's tap away. Glenel getting the better of the ruck field, but not necessarily taking it away. Sorrell this time for Port Adelaide. And a good mark taken by Max James. Gets Prosherko. James didn't go for the usual high fly because the ball dropped short positioned the body beautifully. Well within this player's kicking distance. He makes no mistake for the distance, but his direction is astray and gets the minor score only for the main five. Six goals, six now for that late, 42. Then he'll six goals, two, 38. Phyllis, coming grandstand side. Once more, the immaculate drop punt. Western in there. Herco striding through the opening, takes the ball over the line throw in, half forward, left flank. Port Adelaide lead by four points. Fake, Gerlach, line ball, Ebert in there. The handball is to Liu on the half back line. The Bay player now sends it back towards centre wing and Carey, one, two, grabs the big fellow, did it well. Going past Hodgman, the Bay's into attack once more. A long kick, one on one back there. Spry versus Phyllis, the two big strong ruckmen. And Spry makes no effort to keep the ball in play and seeks the safety of the boundary line. Spry and Phyllis to do the ruck work. Felton running on the ball for Port Adelaide as a rover. Again, no clear tap away. Boundary line close and a repeat throw. -in. Port Adelaide 6-6, six, six, Glenelg 6-2. Six, Four points the difference this time in favour of the Magpies. Carey over the top of the pack and Wayne Phyllis to Kim Hodgman, the good smother. Bruce Light through the pack. Tony Giles, beautiful smother Peter McInerney and keeps the ball running. The chance to put the Bays back in front again, but he shoots it right across the face of goal. Tony Hannon. And the absolute paddock in front of him. See Jackson there, beautifully stepped out of it by Phillips. That magnificent football for that late. Hannon into Phillips. They've carried the ball without a kick. 
up towards the centre wing and now the Magpies in full flight into attack. Tim Evans there, Phyllis in front. The base come out through Goyt. A long kick back towards the half forward line. Setting himself there is Warren. Barkwell needs support. But it comes in the form of Sorrell. Light over to Warren. The Magpies into attack. Short to, Bel uh, to Paul Fleischer. Paul Fleischer now, well out from goal. Looks for the lead of Evans. He jumps. Can't quite make it. James in. Dropped onto the boot of Herco. Back towards the half back line. Kinnear gets clear. Puts it up in the air for Gerlach. All to play on. Weston getting back on the ball. He's taken out. Comes to Granger. Fires towards goal. Will bounce through. Left ball ball. the ball came to him he was caught on his left foot only took two paces then blazed away with a very low trajectory punt kick that landed just centimetres outside the goal line and went through for Port Adelaide's seventh goal 7-6 Port Adelaide 48 the old 6-2 38 Port Adelaide lead now by 10 points Glenelg with the task of pegging that back. Takes tap away. For Felicia, didn't have the ball. Now Ebert has it. Interception by Hodgman. Kick upset. Warren through. Now Hannon and McInerney opposed. Peter McInerney does it well. But the kick away towards the leader, Phyllis Fletcher. Kick in by Spry. Greg Phillips is there, still in the back pocket. Takes his time, then gets the kick away. The pack sets, Graham Corns, Kim Hodgman. Into the open space, the lead of Peter Carey. Won't get there in time, yes he does. Bruce Light is there. He has a paddock in front of him, but no Port Adelaide players to take advantage. Not Voigt. Dodges the charge, gets the ball across to Weston. In towards the lead there of Farquhar. Warren's spoil was good. Runs into trouble. Looks for Hannon. Farquhar, beautiful trap of the ball. Loses it though to Hannon. And somebody being held. Randall Gill. In the back box. Gerlach gets a lead from Russell Ebert, but he's going longer than his skipper. Screws one back towards centre wing. Bleffen from behind. Corns in front. Bleffen takes the ball. Boots the Magpies towards Granger on the half forward line. Cunningham goes past. The handball over. If it sits, he's in business. Boyd comes to meet him. A courageous dash. Twice. Leehu back there. And Boyd will come away from Glenel. Paul Glenel. Towards centre wing and Holt. Towards Rex Boyd and the gauntlet there, Ted. Well, he didn't run the gauntlet, he reached Brent straight out of here, and by gee, didn't that take some fortitude to do just that, but that's typical of the man. He did it beautifully. Tap down by Pake, by Stephen Copping, towards centre-half forward. Fort player zero in. Tony Giles with the run of it, Paul Belton to the rescue. Out in front of Greg Phillips, he's in the centre circle, he'll be run down by Twiggy Caldwell, and Caldwell now will stream Goldwood for the Bays. Phyllis clear in the forward pocket, or oh, drops the chest mark, gets clear, gone, caught again by Spry, great tackle, the long handball from Phillips, will find flight, he's well clear, built for Port Adelaide at centre wing, a chance to run it in, or oh, bad handball back to James, Dummy's in trouble, needs help, gone again. Points the difference and Port Adelaide lead. James's kick high towards the forward line. Evans charging to meet it. Over the top, Lethen, Corn. Dead heat. And a bounce. Dead heat in the forward line with that mark. Peter Mead was only two metres away and could make no mistake with that. Randall Gerlach and Bob Payne. Once again, takes tap away. Jimmy Lehu there, but spoiled. Noddy Boyd again. Runs the risk. Gets taken out of it, but sees David Johnson with the ball and go towards the forward line. Keep your eye on behind the play, Ian. As David Johnson keeps the ball running. No, he doesn't. It's out of bounds and a throw in this. Just a minor flare-up, that one, Ted. Only about three punches. 
Left uh, just between centre wing and the left half forward flank for Glenelg. Glenelg will trail by 10 points. The Ruckman sees the ball once again go Glenelg's way. David Johnson. Over half forward. Giles up to meet it. And safely marks on the chest. 7 6 Port Adelaide. 6 2 Glenelg. Giles from the half back line. Forwards the ball towards centre wing. Corns in front. Good mark. Plays on across goal. Jackson breaking clear. He's on the corner of the big square. Still about 45, 50 metres out from goal. Has Phyllis and Carey up there. Puts it up for the big strong men. Carey be the one that flies. Phyllis is in front. Players desperately trying to get it clear. Spry and Phyllis both on the ground working hard for their respective sides. But the umpire will come in to adjudicate. The bounce down on the edge of the 10 metre square. Port Adelaide leading by 10 points. Carey, Caldwell tries to grab it. Cunningham through to Hodgman. Snaps at goal, but offline one point. Cunningham tried to charge through the pack then, but all he succeeded in doing was throwing the ball onto the chest of Hodgman, who snapped pretty quickly and was just offline. 19 minute mark of the second term. Port 48 points, Glenelg 39, and Greg Phillips kicked it half back flank. Somebody had a grab on it. The Glenelg player, and it was Stephen Cox. <laughs> Certainly been a bruising game. Copping's kick not quite carrying the distance. Kept running by Caldwell. Brian Cunningham has the pace. He gets there. Gets plenty of attention. The ball over the line. Throw it. Right forward pocket for the Bays. Randall Gerlach and Peter Carey will be adversaries on this occasion. And then Peter White in over the top with the fist away, but all for the base. Sid Jackson. Straight up in the air. Called play on. Peter White. Kick towards the centre for Felicia and Lee Hu. Bruce Light. Fist to for Felicia and good. Ranging wide is Max James. Goes in towards the open space, but the base anticipates. Freddie Phillips this time does it well. The full back about 40 metres out from goal as he takes the kick. 20 minute mark, 7 6 port, 6 3 Glenelg. Eva with a big leap over the top of the smaller Hodgson takes it. Fine mark, right in the centre of the ground. Flank by Cunningham, going through as well. Paul Pleasure back to Cunningham in the double play. The Port Adelaide Rover in towards full forward, taken there by Sorrell. Has been paid the mark on the edge of the square. It came in very low. Sorrell was immediately surrounded by two bay defenders. But the umpire has paid the mark, and Sorrell will take the kick 10 metres out right in front. Trevor Sorrell towards the lake end of football park. Very careful, puts it through. Edge is Port Adelaide, further clear. Port Adelaide, 8 6, 54, Glenelg, 6 3, 39. You're viewing the big replay on Channel 7. Port Adelaide, who trailed by five points at quarter time, have now opened up a 15-point break at the 20-minute mark of the second term, and they've done it well. The Nelg are offering tremendous opposition, of course, and it's been an extremely physical game. Gerlach and Carey at the bounce. Granger needs backup support. Forced to do it himself. Weston right there for the base. Granger over the top. Big Carey lumbers in to help. Boots him into attack towards the half forward line. Spry can't complete it. Hodgman in. Has the pace to get out in the open. He's on his left foot. He's got in the square. No, it's uh, Pate there throwing himself at the ball in the full forward pocket. And the big man did it well. Fantastic effort in that first quarter when he edged through two goals for Glenelg. And now the big fellow has a chance again. Farquhar gives the lead, but it's not wanted. Pake is 35 metres out on about a 60 degree angle. Caldwell on the move. Pake takes his time. A nice looking drop punt. The umpire gets underneath. He's converted, I believe. A point goal to the big fellow. Goal number three, Teddy Langridge. Well, it certainly was a good goal, Ian. The pass was way out in front of him. He had to make ground, use his pace, which we know he has. He did it well, took the fine falling mark and then converted for his third goal, which was a good one from a tight angle. Glenelg now 7-3, trail Port Adelaide 8-6.
Jackson having a spell. Coming back onto the ground will be Daryl Rady, who was carried off between the arms of the trainers with uh, appeared to be an ankle injury, but he's back into the play now. In the centre, we see Papusha take advantage. Max James in trouble. Goes short. Granger. Port Adelaide prepared to run. Evans on the lead. Sorrell lurking in the goal square with Chris Herco. Herco in front. Did it well. A safe mark. Nine points the difference. Port Adelaide lead. 23 and a half minutes played. Max James, but leaves it behind. Kim Kinnear does likewise. A boundary line close, but he works well. Finds Paul Belton. Andy Poflisha. Boundary line and Glenelg players to contend with. Max James. Snaps towards goal. He's given it every chance. Oh, that's a nearly pull down a miraculous mark over the top of the pack. But succeeded in rushing it over the line. Port, eight goals, six, seven now. Leading Glenelg, seven goals, three. Phyllis. Grandstand side, Carey and Gerlach will buy for this one. Carey, one grab, coughing off the fingers. His three. His thoughts on the whole matter. Stephen Copping from the half-back right flank kicks the ball back towards centre wing and Korn. Kinnear is thrown into the ground by Korn and he's dashed through the pack. And Kim Kinnear will get the free kick. Port Adelaide already in trouble. Kale is off the ground. Eckerman flipped off as well. And now Kinnear looks like he's, he's out like a light. David Johnson in defence. Kinnear's hardly moved. Great concern for the Port Adelaide power camp. Oh, there's a lot of heavy body work behind play for the action on the half forward line. Brady to Phyllis. Phyllis 40 metres out. Steadies. Puts it up in the air. One on one. Pike and Greg Phillips. And the ball goes through for the minor score. Oh, there's plenty of action there behind play, Ted. Well, Ian, I'd say this is one of the most uh, spiteful finals that I've seen for a long time. I, I I have no hesitation in saying that. And people will probably say I'm uh, living in the past or something, but uh, most of the things that have happened today, there has been no need for. I kid you not. Can he still down? Oh, this is a blow for Port Adelaide. The stretch is coming around. And umpire Bennett has decided to halt play while the Port Adelaide wingman has stretched it off the arena. Well, sensation following sensation in the grand final. Port Adelaide now with three players on the injured list. It'll be interesting to see who will come back onto the ground. Really depletes their forces in their quest to win the grand final. It'll be interesting to see if Port Adelaide keep their cool or whether they go headhunting to even up. John Cale now looking worried, obviously. Kinnear. Looks to be in the region at the back. I can't see anyone who's coming back on again, Ted. Uh, well, is he going out through the players? No, he's not even being taken out through the reserve gate. Yes, he's being ushered along just in case that he can come back onto the ground. And it's Ivan Eckerman who's going to take his place for Port Adelaide. Right, the action back at the half forward right flank. Spry and Phyllis. Corns over the top. His big fist away. Warren through, Farquhar, the hand pass, finds Herco, in towards the forward pocket, Bob Pike, he goes down from a heavy hit to the head, and away goes Hannah. Again with this paddock in front of him, well shepherded by Greg Phillips, goes up towards the forward flank, Bruce Fighters there, Henkerman ranging inside him, and also Bruce Granger, David Granger rather, Granger in towards the forward pocket, dropping back Phyllis, left them nearly marked on the chest but over the line right forward pocket for Port Adelaide now by G Hannon and Boyd aren't they giving some springboard drop from that back pocket for their respective sides exciting football Ted great stuff Evans taking it against Carey Corns over the back Boyd in there surrounded back in support Phyllis kicks back towards the half back line Johnson there with White White can't get clear and it's uh, won the free kick for holding the man. Bruce Light 
from his wing is down in the full forward right pocket about 40 meters out from goal forward line looking pretty cluttered at the moment on the lead is james light goes longer looking for evans corns there great mark big leap in the square and pulls down the defensive mark for Cornell. graham corns certainly not the favorite of the port adelaide supporters at the moment chris herco over the top of Stephen Topping. He's got the boundary line and two Port Adelaide players, but is equal to the task. Farquhar now for Cornell. G does it well. Played coolly. I think he was a veteran of many games. Down to the forward line. Paint. He's hit too high by Giles, and he'll get a free kick in the forward pocket. Bob Paint. He's kicked three goals for the Tigers. The chance for number four. some 15 metres out, maybe 20, but a 45 degree angle. For a man who's only been playing Australian rules football two or three seasons, Ted, he's certainly a most improved player. His fifth kick, and he's already kicked three goals, will have been number four. Splits the centre, great kick by the ball by Ruckman, goal number four, and the bait, pull back. Three and a half minutes at the time on of the second quarter, Three points the difference here in the grand final. 8-4 Glenelg, 8-7 Port Adelaide. You're viewing the big replay on Channel 7. Only three points the difference. Glenelg trail by that three points. In the goal square, in the goal square, two players. Phyllis and Evans. They've both gone to ground. Freddie Phyllis gets up holding his head. Tim Evans goes away holding his head. They must have both got hit by a bolt of lightning. They're both holding their head. Well, Ted, there wasn't another player to within 50 metres of them, and Phyllis is obviously is, uh, spilling claret. So it's Freddie Phyllis. Most extraordinary. Look at the concern on Coach John Nichols' face. Well, I don't know what to say here, and that's a 110 yards or something from the play. Pure conjecture, Ted, but it looks and like you can't blame umpires for this, Ian. It's, uh, they'll get the blame for it, but that's just not on. It's the players who uh, who are into it. It's been a lot of feeling in this game, Ian. I don't know if you felt it up here in the box, but by gee, it's been a lot of feeling in the game. I agree, Ted, and this would have to be the most sensational final for many, many years indeed. I can't recall one where there has been more action in the first half. Well, there was a goal umpire surely within 10 metres of it or 5 metres of it because they were in the goal square. Yet I couldn't believe it. The two of them were just lying there on the ground as though that they were passed out. Caldwell has gone to full back. The knock away by James. Beaver into the forward line. He's going to bounce his way in. Takes the kick. Beaver Kick. And Freddie Phillips by G. He won't earn the first uh, words of John Nichols after that one because this could set up almost a certain goal for Ivan Eckerman. He's only 25 metres out. Well, I know we shouldn't talk about incidents in a game, Ian, because it doesn't do much for the game of football, but when they're all incidents, it's pretty hard not to. Eckerman's kick. goes now to nine points. Nine goals, seven, Port Adelaide, Glenelg, eight goals, four, and 31 minutes now played in the second term. The way things are going, it's going to be the survival of the fittest. Those that are still standing at the final bell. Fred Phillips has gone down to the forward line for the action back at the centre. Spry and Carey. Front position, Spry. And... Uh, he gets the free kick. Well, he went to handball. But going back to kick long. To the half-forward line. Highwood in front. Destroyed from behind. Poor Pisha in there for the crumb. Taking the ground down there. By McInerney and gone for holding the ball. Peter McInerney at centre-half back. To push the base out of defence. Carey well wide at centre wing. Receives the pass. Short to Parkway. 
No, that's Coffey. Stephen Coffey didn't play on, went back to kick long. We've had almost eight minutes of time on in this second quarter. An incident-packed second quarter. Phyllis through, trying to use strength. Even back at defence. Sorrell there. A long kick by Sorrell on the half-forward line. Looking for Granger, but Paul Weston keeps his balance well and takes the mark on the half-back right flank. Weston looks for a lead. It goes towards the half-forward flank. Wayne Phyllis there. Three Port Adelaide players. The back... Glenn Warren couldn't get it away. Trevor Sorrell runs it over the line. Throw in. Right half forward flank for the bowl. Linnell Gate 4 trail court 9-7. 33 minutes now played in this second term. James with the fist away. McInerney close to the boundary line. Throw in. Wayne Phyllis and John Spry again. Peter McInerney from the front of the pack. Len Warren there for Port Adelaide, but also the boundary line. Ruckman first to walk at work again. Siren, end of the second term, half time in the grand final of 77, and Corns and Spry into it at half time. And Spry, I think he's going to try and see the colour of Graham Corns cut. I'll give you the scores. Port Adelaide, 9-7-61. Glenelg, 8-4-52. Third quarter of the centenary grand final. Port Adelaide, 9-7. Glenelg, 8-4. Nine points in favour of the Magpies. James takes them away from centre towards Blethen. Lurking clear was built. Back to Blethen. Hooks around the corner looking for big... Tim Evans, but he can't quite make it. The ball is out of play on the foot. A sensational second quarter. Players have had the interval to pull down. Granger on the half forward left flank. Might be just outside his distance. He would be a good 60 metres out from goal. Freddie Phyllis to full forward and uh, Twiggy Caldwell's at full back for the bar. The action on David Granger. A magnificent towering punt kick across the goal, however. And the mark has been played to Paul Weston. Weston in the full-back left pocket. Any other moves, Ted, that you can see? Not uh, up here. Eckerman's in a forward pocket for Port Adelaide. They've got real problems with three injuries, and he's got a heavily strapped thigh, of course. Spry couldn't take the mark. <coughs> Kim Hodgman kick into the open space. Wayne Phillips out on the lead. With Greg Phillips behind. Lynn Warren. Port Adelaide move it forward. Russell Ebert. The right half forward flank. Across again to Warren. In towards the pocket. Evans and Caldwell. Caldwell in front. Comes to Blethen. Now Highwood. Across the void. The Bay's out of trouble out towards the centre, but Warren's there. Good gather of the ball. Straight into attack and off the side of the boot. Getting back in defence. A good mark taken by Chris Herco. Ivan Eckerman, who's come back onto the ground with a Big bandage on his right thigh. Has problems, as Port Adelaide have. Warren running to the ground. Kim Kinnear, who was stretched off the arena in the second quarter, has been concussed with a knock in the head. Daryl Cale has got problems with a cork thigh, as have Ivan Eckerman, and he's in the forward pocket and will probably finish the rest of the game there. Ball on the half-forward right flank. Port Adelaide, 9-7, Glenelg, 8-4. First half of the grand final, despite with many incidents. Pate, Spry, Wait down there, Pate fighting for it hard. Granger it was over the top, and once more a bounce ball. The right forward pocket for Port Adelaide. Thorns tap away, and also goes to the ground. He gets a break. in the back pocket with the ball. Take and Spry, take front position. Cunningham sees the lead of Evans, goes towards the open spot. Over the top went uh, Caldwell, left it on the ground, searches it out and snaps goalward. Getting back is Graham Corns and he marks safely in defence. 9-7 Port Adelaide, 8-4 Glenelg. 
Graham Corns. Over towards the grandstand flank again. Max James up over the top, a big fly. Spry in trouble. The handball, Cunningham, but it's Slater's got the pace in the pocket. Hooked in towards goal, but going right across and will bounce out of play, rather belatedly out of play now. Full forward left pocket. 9-7 to 8-4. Nine points put Adelaide in front. Evans vying for the ruck, along with Granger. Evans snaps. Taken here by Belton. Cunningham at ease. Cunningham at ease. Goal. That is a magnificent goal from that angle, Ian. Would be the goal of the day. The Ken, the Ken Mack goal of the day to Brian Cunningham. He was swamped by players. As Evans went for the ruck throw in, the ball was forced into that forward pocket. And from an unbelievable angle, Brian Cunningham, as ambidextrous as any person you see, snapped truly for Port Adelaide's 10th goal. Port Adelaide 10 7, Glenel Gate 4, and the centre bound sees Wayne Phillips get it away, but in doing so, he pushed in the back. John Spry to take the kick. Spry from the centre circle. Short, or G set for Fleischer up. He misses it. Hodgman to copy, back to Wayne Phillips, and the Bays move it over the centre line. Bob Fake gets in a good position. The Bays move it forward. Wheaton Carey, and Carey does it well to McInerney. McInerney snap at goal. Sees the ball elude Freddie Phyllis, who's gone from full back to full forward, and bounced through for the minor score to Glenelg. Eight goals, five the Bays. 10-7 Port Adelaide. Randall Gerlach takes the kick in and comes to the grandstand flank. Johnson swoops on the ball. Shepherded by Holt. Hooks it round the corner. Hodgman with the opportunity gets a bad bounce. Corns. 30 metres out. Short pass to Pike. Good football. And the big fellow takes the mark about 25 metres out. Already has four goals. In a superb performance from that forward pocket. The big fellows snap some miraculous goals today. Kick number seven. Heads towards the lake end. Goes to the right goal post, not coming back, has it come back sufficiently? Goal! Fine effort to Bob Fake, his fifth goal. And the base come back seven minutes into this third quarter. The new 9-5, Port Adelaide 10-7. You're viewing the big replay on Channel 7. Bob Fake's fifth goal has uh, narrowed the margin to eight points now, and Port Adelaide 10-7, lead Glenelg 9-5. We're only seven minutes into the third term. And the Ruckman in the centre are Spry and Phyllis. Spry's tap grabbed by Phyllis. The base move forward again. Through comes Gerlach. Spread Eagles attack but allows Rady through. He sees Pike loose again. And that's successful. Rady dropped in short. Like Johnson ranging in a better position. Better the angle. Only 30 metres out. Could make it two points the difference. Eight kick to David Johnson. He's given it the right direction. Hasn't got the length on it. And there's Giles with a hand pass away. Gets it to Sorrell and finally over the line. Throw in on the right forward pocket. For the Bays. Pake and Gerlach. Tap away by Pake. Comes to Phillips, a good tackle. Comes to McInerney, well held. Tackle applied by Tony Giles was good. Gerlach has been moved into the back pocket to Stan Pake, who's proving most troublesome to the Port Adelaide defence. Giles is kicked back towards the centre of the ground. Ebert in front. Johnson unloaded. Light goes through. Goes to the outer side. Noddy Boyd once more rebounding. Got caught that time, pressured into a poor kick, but it's topping there. Worried all the way. Still in there battling. Finally, umpire Bennett will bounce. Between centre and centre wing, Port Adelaide 10 7, Glenelg 9 5. Very tough physical clash in the grand final. 
Wayne Phillips a long handball over towards Farquhar for Fleischer. Farquhar again just dribbles it into play. McInerney on the half forward line gets a short pass underway to Hodgman takes it too far out to score looking for the loose spin takes giving him a lead but he's going to duck around the opposition fires one in towards goal into the square ball comes to ground Brady there with the opportunity from the edge of the square he blasts it through good effort to Darrell Brady it's his first goal he's come back after an injury it looked like that he was going to leave the arena for good but as Hodgman played off around the man from the forward pocket the pack in the square flew Brady waiting down on the ground eluded the Port Adelaide defenders and popped it through his first Grinnell's 10th and now the Tigers trail by only two points 10-7 to 10-5 10 minute mark of the third term and only two points the difference and this game set up for real beauty as it's been all day Strays tap away Granger for Port Adelaide and through comes Ebert goes in long called well from behind Evans spoils well Boyd in again he's been a great player in that back pocket and finds Stephen Topping Stephen Topping now over centre wing Giles into the back of him goes Farquhar and Giles will take the free kick no lead on at the moment as Giles will set the ball up high into attack. It's unlike the Port Adelaide. They normally run. Voigt through again. Into the opener goes. David Johnson. Brian Cunningham runs him off it. Back to Peter Voigt. Out towards the half forward flank it goes for Port Adelaide. Highwood is there at the drop of the ball. Granger fists it into the forward pocket. Blethen is there. Beautifully tackled. And finally over the line. Throw in. Stephen Highwood clutching the thigh. The throw, Chris Herco back to Stephen Highwood. That sore thigh did him no good. Ivan Eckerman with a sore thigh also. Goes towards goal but misses. One point over. Well, Stephen Highwood's coming off the ground. It looks like the hamstring has gone again. He's had problems with it throughout the season. And he's heading for the reserve interchange gate. And it's going to be Peter Johnson to come back on. But on the outer side, Theo with the ball. Set up a short play to Weston. He's at centre wing. The Bay's a chance to run the ball into attack. Giles has shepherded it out of it. Weston going for a sprint along the outer side. Two bounces. Sets up the short one to Hodgman. He's clear. 30 metres out. Settles towards goal. Puts it up in the air. And a great goal to the Bay. Magnificent football. Port Adelaide never touched the ball as it was kicked off from that behind by Ivan Eckerman. The who to Weston. Weston down the outer side. He was well shepherded by his teammate as he went through the half forward line. Set up the loose man to Hodgman and he blasted away and the Bays have hit the front in the 770 final by three points. Great stuff. 11-5 to 10-8. Try through. The tap away, however, was by Phyllis. James overran and Hodgman again. Cunningham tackled by. No, Hodgman free kick prior to that run into attack again. 18th kick to Kim Hodgman. 12 minutes into the third term. Sees the lead of Carey. Voigt in front. Peter Voigt to receive a free kick. Goes over the centre. And a mark to David Franklin. Quick play on finds Russell Ebert. Out to the lead of Tim Evans. Caldwell was there to spoil that attempt. Chris Herco carries the ball over the line. Now looking for Tim Evans on the lead, but the problem is he's being destroyed and there's no little man in that forward pocket to pick up the crumbs. Ivan Eckerman with that cork thigh can't make the grade to get up there to pick it up. Ruck throw in again. Caldwell from behind. Does it well. Down to Corn. Back to Hodgman. Over to the defensive flank. Bruce Light. Darrell Rady comes through. Beautifully shepherded for by Warren. And Light drives the man quite back. Oh, that's game! What a mark! What a mark! The key to mark of the day, Ted, for sure. Well, he's always likely to do the impossible, Ian, and that almost was the impossible. Darrell Rady in real trouble again. He copped another one on that shin. 
in very similar circumstances to the way he copped it in the first turn. James Kick, he's got across it, and misses, one point only. Port 10-9, Glenelg 11-5, two points to difference, and Twiggy Caldwell to kick the ball back into play. Twiggy Caldwell over towards the grandstand flat. Gerlach, Wayne Phyllis, Corns, searches for Rady at centre wing. The Bay player drives him into the vacant half forward left flank. Big Jack Spry lumbers over to get the ball. No support, he's going to have to do it on his own. Robbed off him by Pate. No one in the square for the Bays. It's all Tony Hannon back there. But the Port Adelaide player can go for another one of his electrifying runs. He's working on Copping to come towards him. He gets it over to the outer side. Sorrell, oh, grabbed high. Played the rest. Trevor Sorrell at centre wing. Cunningham clear. Finds it at the half forward line. The Magpies into attack once more. Blethen on the lead. But Cunningham's going longer. Puts it to the edge of the square. John Evans well guarded. Wayne Phyllis. Hodgman, Leo, Copping, and the Bays come out of defence. Blind football. Leo's been grounded behind play. Once more, we have a wrestle over to Farquhar for the action with the Bays as they go into attack. Fred Phillips on the lead. Players quieting down behind play. Freddie Phillips on the half forward flank as he takes the kick. In towards the goal square. It's a big kick from behind. Warren destroyed it. Andy Porplesia finds Tony Giles. Just gets the kick in towards the centre. Randall Gerlach. Right in the centre of the ground. Port's turn to go into attack, and they do. But they're just putting it up in the air. And there's a great mark in defence by Twiggy Caldwell. He certainly made his presence felt since he went to full back. Well, Port Adelaide are looking for Evans on every occasion, Ted, and he's well covered. He's got two men on him. They're going to have to seek some alternative avenue of attack. David Johnson, the kick towards half forward. Carey spoil. Hodgman through. The Bay's running on. Down towards the forward pocket. Phyllis and Phillips. And it's Phillips at the back of the pack. Keeps the ball running. McInerney in. Chipped in. The ball must surely have been over the line. It was. No, a bounce. Right there, could get away, Hannon again, into the open space, copying with a hand pass, finds Hodgman, he goes in short and towards Wayne Phillips, nobody can break clear, players pack up again and Peter Mead will bounce. 10-9 Port Adelaide, trails on an L, 11-5, desperate football. Carey couldn't find it, Fuck was snapped forward, play, play on is the call. Been tucked off the boot. Umpire Mead had no hesitation in calling Plake to play on, although the big fellow took the mark in the pocket. And under pressure, he kicked out of bounds on the full. Greg Phillips to bring the ball back into play. 10 9, 69, Port Adelaide, 11 5, 71, Glenelg. 17 minutes into this third quarter. Phillips, corned up. An ill timed leap, and he's given away a free kick. Belton wants to play on, but the free kick will go back to Randall Gerlach on half-back flank. Gerlach will sink the boot into the ball towards the centre. The big pack gathers again, and the mark pulled down in the middle of the pack by Jeff Fleck. Lefton calling players to go deep. Goes in long, again towards Evans, at the back her goal, and in front Caldwell. A long hand pass will find Johnson. That's Peter Johnson. He goes wingwards. Carey's there with Brady and Peter Woik for Port Adelaide. Woik has been held. 15 metre 50 to go the way of a Port Adelaide player. Three kicks, Port Adelaide 27, Glenelg 14. 18 minute mark of the third term. Peter Woik gets the Maggies up forward where they don't have a lot of run. Max James again. Cold play on. Thought he had a grip on it. Looked good to me. 
Just inside centre half forward for the Maggies. Carey's tap away. Bruce like and then Bruce Lee and Jimmy Lee who finds David Johnson. Daryl Rady spoiled by Warren. Spray is there also. Rady does it beautifully to keep the ball running for him. Gains a lot of distance for the Mays. All the ball went over the line. Play a stop, but it's allowed to play on. Phillips pushed in the back. Greg Phillips of Port Adelaide. Deep in the back pocket. Goes down towards the half-back flank. Graham Cord's in front. Over the back of the pack. Paul Fleischer grabs Cord, holding the ball. Paul Fleischer on the half-back line. Port Adelaide trail by two points. 20 minutes into this third quarter. Paul Fleischer directs play towards the centre of the ground. James sets himself big leap by Granger McInerney. Wayne Phillips. Western running clear on the half-forward line. But Phyllis going back to King Long, kick long towards his brother Fred. Puts it up in the air for him. Using his body, trying to get a grab at the ball. Tapped out from Craig the Hodgman. Hook round the corner, coming back with the boot. It looks to be good. Offline, one point. Oh, not a bad try by Hodgman. Must have just brought it back too much. One point to the Bay, 11-7. Port Adelaide, 10-9. Again, takes quick picking in that forward pocket. Getting the ball out to Hodgman to score the point was good stuff. And then Phillips quickly out to the outer side. The mark must be taken. Paul Belt is in trouble if he hadn't taken the mark. The Bays look to be running on just so much better at the moment. Brian Cunningham leaves it behind. David Holt finds Peter McInerney. Into the pocket it goes. Sorrell's tap away is grabbed by Kimmy Hodgman. On the lead, Fred Phillips right into the chest with go. Fred's no stranger to the lead in the pass. Started to pull back and switched to pull forward during the second turn. Three-point advantage so far to Glenelg. Freddie Phyllis' kick makes it a nine-point advantage with his first goal. Glenelg, 12 goals, six lead, Port Adelaide, 10 goals, nine. The pass from Hodgman to the leader of Phyllis was good. He took the mark and then made no mistake with the kick. And that means Port Adelaide now, 10-9, trail Glenelg, 12-6, at the 22-minute mark of the third turn. The danger signals up for the Magpies. The Bays appear to have more run. Port Adelaide was hardly an effective forward. At the bounce, Carey. James grabs it. Ebert. Gerling. Port Adelaide's into attack towards their half-forward line. Evans, two on one there. Edged out of it and free. Caldwell, a little unhappy with the decision. A magnificent start by Evans. Kicked three in the first quarter, one in the second. But since then, he's been well held. Tim Evans, about 35 metres out kicking towards the golf course end. Uses a drop punt with effect. The umpire says that's good. And Port Adelaide's come back. 23 minutes into this third quarter of the centenary grand final. Port Adelaide 11-9, Glenelg 12-6. You're viewing the big replay on Channel 7. Once again, with only a three-point margin, Glenelg leading. Nobody knows really what the win's doing because both sides have scored at either end. And there hasn't been much in this game all day. It's been a very bruising affair, and the survival of the fittest certainly it will be. Centre bounce. Gerlach. Wayne Phyllis. Gerlach's tap. And again, in trouble. Look at the arms and legs in there as players desperately try to get the ball forward. A rebounce. Wayne Phyllis has won the free kick. Just kicks out of the centre circle. Pate leads into the pocket, but he's going short. Weston created the loose man. Johnson, but has to come and get it. Sparkler backs him up. Back to Johnson. Long in towards the forward pocket. Coming out of defence is Giles. Has time to get clear now. Settles. Will find Gerlach. A lot of pressure put on him then by young Sparkler, but the big fellow made it. About 20 metres, check side of the centre circle. Goes out wide to the lead of Clinton. He's pulled G, appear to be pushed. He gets the ball clear to Brian Cunningham. 
out into the pocket, Caldwell and Evans again, Caldwell in front, and G he's done a mammoth job since he's gone back to fullback. That would be his fourth or fifth mark in man-to-man -man duel. Sorrell there against Copping, and Copping wins a free kick for Sorrell's attention. Three points of difference in the Bay's lead as 24-minute mark comes up in this third turn. McInerney a chance to set up the play to Hodgman. Hodgman is flanked by Johnson. On the half-forward line, desperate play there by Light, who ran him down, kick underway. Phyllis can't quite get there. And Phillips in attention, and the ball's run out of play. Full forward right pocket, the Bay's in attack. 35 metres around from the behind post. Pace, Jack Spry. Corns over the top. Spry buys for it. Hodgman in the forward pocket. Dummies put under pressure finally and kicked out of bounds on the foot. Well, Port Adelaide defence, uh, they're not certainly uh, going to let the Glenelg forwards get an easy kick. They're keeping the pressure on as their counterparts are at the other end are doing the same to the Port Adelaide forwards. Tony Charles to kick. Time on only now to be played during for this third term. Now the half-back flank. Gerlach almost hooked in the mark. Brian Cunningham's there, backed up by Ebert. Cunningham pushed in the back. So the half-back flank as he takes the kick. Kick number 14. This time Gerlach completes the mark. Looks for a lead. Uh, not a lot of leads happening up at the Port Adelaide forward line. It's a wobbly old kick. Ball play on. Blethen off the ground. Jimmy Lee who? With the clearing kick, Darrell Rady, despite the attentions of Warren, was able to mark. Over towards Carey, the hand pass misplaced. Desperate play then again by uh, Giles. He got a clear across to Warren, and Warren's kick will see Stephen Copping mark and drive Glenelg back into attack once more. Copping at centre wing. Pike. Fry will be late on the scene. Pike doesn't take it. McInerney in support there on the half forward line. Dodges a heavy buck. Holt's in trouble. Gerlach crashes his way through. Puts Port back towards the half forward line. Blethen. Feared to take it off the hands of Granger, but it's been paid. One on one in the square. Caldwell versus Evans. Evans this time overruns the ball. Herco back there in support of Caldwell, and the ball screws out of play. Well, Port Adelaide coming unstuck in their forward lines. I've said it once, I must have said it three times in this quarter. Evans is blocked, they haven't got another method of attack. Blethen, Granger, Weston all in there. Farquhar hooks it back towards the half-back flank. Almost half volley there by Johnson, but once more out of play. Renault lead by three points, two minutes into time on. Bob Fake, Max James will be the ruckman. James Leap got him up there first, but Glenelg bring it away through Michael Farquhar. John Spry will get it back into attack. He sees the lead of Belton. Belton sets up the play across to Russell Ebert. He goes for the short one. Granger takes the mark. In time on, Port Adelaide have got the chance to get their nose back in front again. There's going to be some tired players tonight, Ted. It's been a hard game. David Granger. He's kicked one. The kick is on the way. The streamers fly. He's kicked two. And Port Adelaide go back three points in front. Port Adelaide 12-9. Glenelg 12-6. Two goals for David Granger. Well, there's a lot of players now with their socks down and looking a little bit weary. And there's still a hard grueling last quarter to go. Very little breeze in it, and if every, anything, it's still favouring the golf course end. But everything's set for a magnificent final quarter of the 77 Grand Final. Spray and Pike. Spray tap away. A free kick will go the way of Pike. Right in the centre circle as he takes it, or as he kicks it. Wobbles up to the forward line. McInerney! Oh. 
45 meters out from goal. 14th kick to Peter McInerney. Oh, it's not a good one. He won't remember his 14. And out in front, Tony Giles. In the back pocket as he takes it. Four minutes of time on play. Searches out wide of Brian Cunningham. Hugs the boundary line. Ebert is there with Holst. And a throw in on centre wing out of side. Glenelg 12 6 78 at trailing court 12 9 81. 30 minutes played in the third term. 10 is Fry, 21 is Pike. Fry's knocked down and a recovery to Bruce Light. Port Adelaide can go in even across towards Poplicia. Into the forward line. Evans with that ring of players around him again. Eckerman with that bad leg. Snap goal with the siren sounded. And Eckerman has snapped a magnificent goal right on the siren. Port Adelaide 39. That ball coming down from Andy Poplicia's kick into the pocket. Evans went with it with the Bay players. Off the hands of Kane. Ivan Eckerman with that heavily strapped fry. Snapped towards goal as soon as the ball had left his boot. The siren sounded. And Port Adelaide in the dying minutes with Eckerman's second goal. Get there. 13th on the board. So at three-quarter time, Port Adelaide 39-87. Lead Glenelg 12-6, 78. Final. 13-9, Port Adelaide, 12-6, Glenelg. Quickly into attack is Port Adelaide. Evans can't quite get there. And coming out of defence, Peter Johnson comes short. Looking for Liu, cutting across. Sorrell leaves the ball behind. Liu on the half-back. Quickly out to Pike. Gets a bad, Holf gets a bad bounce. Even short, will find Cunningham on the half-forward line. Port Adelaide lead by nine points, thanks to that marvellous goal by Eckerman in the last seconds of the third quarter, but in defence, Michael Farquhar takes the mark for the Bates. Nine points the difference. Farquhar's kick towards centre wing. Two court players by for it, and call play on Carey can't break through. And a scramble of arms and legs. As could be expected, a bit of pace and sting gone out of the game after one of the most torrid first half of football ever seen in South Australia. I kid you not. Carey's tap away, Paul Belden. No, Andy Poplicia up towards the forward line, but Rex Boyd in the back pocket again takes the mark. 87 points to 78. James in front. McInerney finds Hodgman towards centre half forward. Rady and Warren and Rady marks and a quick break away. Rady lining up towards goal. He can get another bounce in. He doesn't want it. He makes no mistake. Three points to difference. Darrell Rady goals. Second goal to Darrell Rady. The ball taken by McInerney. The hand pass to Hodgman was good. Hodgman centering of the ball towards centre half forward. Warren couldn't spoil. Rady quickly played on with a couple of bounces as he ran towards goal. He lined up and coolly put it through to make the difference. Three points. Port 39, Glenelg 13-6. 56,717 people here at the grand final. And you can bet your life not one will leave before the final siren. Gerlach in opposition to Carey at the bounce. It's Carey's big fist. McInerney. Warren getting underneath it. Gets support, but he overruns it. In there, Pike in trouble and uh, will go for holding the ball. No, it's going to be a bounce ball. It was Graham Corns in trouble. A bounce on the Bay half forward line. They trail by only three points. Tremendous grand final. Spry. Further forward by James. Farqua. James buttering up again. Ebert, determination on his face. Kicks the ball to the half forward line off the ground. The battle of the speedsters. Voigt there. Felton hustling him all the way and Voigt travels the ball across the line. Rex Voigt would certainly be pleased you called him a speedster, Ian. Well, he showed it today, Ted. He certainly And has. some of his courageous dashes at the ball will live in my memory for a long time. Throw in and knocked away by Lehu. Sorrell through. It runs into Lehu. Well done, the little fellow, but the whistle is blown. Carey and Gerlach and then Granger. 
Granger leaves it behind. Gerlach in trouble. Cunningham in trouble. Bruce Light tries to get it running. Well done, Johnston. Holston, Light, head to head. Granger can't keep it running. And Robin Bennett will control proceedings. There's a tap, tap away by Carey. Glenelg again going forward. McInerney's pace will stand him in good stead. Hooks it back towards Corns. Warren up. Corns down. And Warren has been free kicked for being held. No, Giles. Giles quick play on. Out wide. Phillips. Oh, the ball won't sit. Comes back now. Out to the flank. Looks for Paul Belton. Belton has the lead from Ivan Eckerman. Over the top goes Johnston. Ebert first there. The tap to Bruce Light is good. Light drives up long. Caldwell and Evans. Evans from behind. Lethen into the open goal square and dribbles it through and Port Adelaide have opened it up to nine points once again. First goal to Jeff Lethen as the ball came down from the centre. It was kicked forward over the top of the pack. Evans couldn't mark it, neither could Twiggy Caldwell. Blethen chipped in and made no mistake, dribbling along the ground. Port 14-9, Glenelg 13-6, five-minute mark of the last turn. Gerlach on the ball in opposition to Peter Carey. Gerlach taps it. Copping. Cunningham in for Port Adelaide. The Magpies go in again. On the lead is Evans in front position. Destroyed by Caldwell. Western in support. Edges the ball out. Granger through for Port Adelaide. Hooks the ball back. In the pocket. Waiting for it. Max James. Edged off by Caldwell. Well done. And the Bay defenders. Smothered by Eckerman. Great play by the injured one. And a free kick to Ivan Eckerman. 25 metres out. An important one for the Magpies. Eckerman heavily strapped in the thigh. Came back showing courage when Port Adelaide have got Daryl Kale off. Kim Kinnear off the ground also concussed. Eckerman forced a return. Already has two goals. Chips away. The umpire starting to move underneath it. I think he's guided it through. Third goal. Ivan Eckerman. The shout of triumph, the strain showing on John Cale's face as Port Adelaide edge 15 points clear. 15-9 Port Adelaide, the middle 13 goals, six, seven minutes into the grand final. The final quarter. John Cale trying to stay cool. Take off, Jackson on for Glenel. Carey taps away again for Plesha. Across to Giles, up to the forward line. Blethen. Quick turn, goes long into attack. Johnson in front, can't keep it running. Max James loses out. Paul Belton runs into trouble. The ball smothered off his boot and bounces over the line. The Bays with the big contract of coming back from the best part of three goals down. But still plenty of time throw James up over the top and will be free kicked Peter Carey to Jimmy Lee who not quite to the halfback flank as he takes the kick and fires for centre wing Giles in corns there but it's taken away by Jack Jackson kicked across goal Brady has Johnson running clear but he's coming away on the right boot up towards full forward, great falling mark has been paid to Spry under tremendous pressure. Right. Poor Fisher is short, but he's covered now by Hodgman. And White will show experience and go back and kick long out of defence. Just to keep it away from Carey if he can. Comes down grandstand side. Carey's going to set himself for it. Blethen over the top. And the umpire in for the bounce. 15-9, Port Adelaide. Glenelg, 13-6. Big crowd around the ball. Carey's tap away, but Sorrell gets it clear. Back to Peter White. 
Back towards centre wing. Andy Portfleischer out there. Cooper. Throw in. Centre wing. 99 points Port Adelaide. Glenelg 84. Just on nine minutes of the last term played. Carey's tap away. Lever through. He can bounce his way into attack. Carries it towards centre half forward. Then goes for the lead of Evans. In front it was Johnston. Cunningham swoops onto the loose ball. Snaps back towards the goal square. No mark taken. Chris Herco waits too long. A good tackle, but he's got good back up in Twiggy Caldwell. Caldwell waits. Now to play on. Bruce Light finds Max James. Just gets his boot to ball. Noddy Void again. Back to Twiggy Caldwell. From the back pocket, the Bays move towards centre wing. Carey sets himself. Just gets there in time on the half-back line. Hodgman is running out in front of the rover. Paul Pleasure closing on him now. Thought about playing on, but goes back wisely as it turns out. Hodgman just the attack side of centre wing. Scoos a nice-looking kick towards the centre-half forward position. Voigt back to Jackson. Grubbers went up towards full forward. Phyllis there by himself. Phillips closing on him now. Fred Phyllis from about 10 metres out. Hooks it round towards goal. And Hannon runs it through for a point. And the Port supporters breathe again. G. Phyllis was about 10 metres clear. He's of opponent there, Ted. Had the ball sat for him quickly. Could have been a goal. 14-point margin in favour of Port Adelaide as Greg Phillips kicks to the defensive flank, the grandstand flank. Tiredness creeping in, not for Kim Hodgman. He gets there, beautifully tackled. No, he's not beautifully tackled. Fling by Andy Porfleischer. He's just out of distance, perhaps. 45 to 50 metres. 27th kick to Kim Hodgman for Glenelg Grove. Taking his time. Carey in short. Oh, gee, there's a dangerous move. Port Adelaide. Didn't see that. Carey must have run 30 yards or late 30 yards to get there, Ian. Now he's well within the big fella's kicking distance. Gerlach picked up the move, Ted, but he couldn't make the, the metre to get up there. Has two. 45 metres out. Carey struggling for distance. It's going to be touch and go in the square. Look at the pack of players there. Fisted through by Hannon. Concedes a point and wisely done by the youngster. 13 points the difference. 13-8. Glenelg. 15-9 Greg Phillips this time to the outer flank Bruce Max James gets it down to Bruce Light out in front of the run of Tony Giles no Len Warren Len Warren into the forward area Bruce carried away from Tim Evans Noddy Voigt runs into the tackle of David Granger and he's been free kick Noddy Voigt to take it at centre half back David Granger he won't change his mind son 14th kick to Rex Boy. Short, dropping back Paul Weston. Between centre half back and the centre line as he takes the kick, goes towards centre half forward. Setting himself is Voigt. In front, takes the mark. Graham Corns couldn't get off the ground on that occasion. Peter Voigt at centre half back. He's put in a superb performance. 12 kick. Going to the outer side. But we see a free kick being given up field by the other umpire. A free kick being given right up field some 60 metres when Cunningham was tagged. And he'll take the kick just the attack side of the centre circle. Cunningham now to put Port Adelaide into attack. Short pass, too far for light. Oh, that was dangerous football. Jackson breaks clear. At centre wing, the Bays into attack again. Looking for Rady on the outer side. Warren has to chase and the ball goes out of play. Half forward left flank. Port Adelaide 15-9-99. Glenelg 13-8-86 and we've played 13 and a half minutes of this grand final. Ruckman, Wayne Phyllis and Randall Gerlach. Brian Cunningham in front, he's been leagued. See what he does with this kick. Getting plenty of leads. 19th kick, Brian Cunningham. 
It's Fry in the middle of the pack. Pulls one down. Very needed one. That was it. He was outnumbered. Three to one. Out wider we find Paul Belden. Into the forward pocket. Andy Paul Fleischer can't make it. Linnell glues the ball back towards Paul Fleischer. He can run into the goal square. He's got Tim Evans out on his own. Finds that player 25 metres out from goal. Great play, Paul Fleischer. Well, he had to suck uh, Twiggy Caldwell in. How would you like to have had Twiggy Caldwell's dilemma on that occasion? He had to take off Ted. He had no alternative. However, Tim Evans, he's got five to his credit so far. He's got six to his credit. Listen to the Port fans roar. And Port Adelaide, 16 goals, 9, 105. Lead out on Glenelg, 13 goals, 8, 86. Well, the big question on everybody's lips down here, especially the Port Adelaide, will they break their 12-year drought? I would think that Jeffrey Potter and John Cale, who both played in the last Premiership side in 1965, would love to know whether they will at last break through after their disappointment of last year. Ashley McKay, the, rucker, uh, the runner there. Russell Ebert, who bows and declares that a Premiership is greater than his three McGarry medals. A 19-point margin to the Magpies, and Spry to Cunningham, to the lead of Evans. Evans can't complete the mark. Taken away by Weston and David Johnston successfully marks. A quick play on, they have to move it. Russell Ebert, he can bounce his way into attack. Into the forward pocket he goes, Jeff Flethen is there. The experience of Bethan, Flethen running into the open space, creating the lead for his skipper to kick to worked. Jeff Flethen is on a very tight angle. The breeze is blowing perhaps a little right to left across his body. The drop punt on the way, the goal umpire into position, but one point only. 20 points the difference. Port Adelaide 16-10, Glenelg 38. John Nichols and Peter Mark are looking most concerned. Flanked by Chairman of Selectors Alan Crabb. With a kick in by Caldwell's coming grandstand side. Carey sets himself. Spry there as well in the middle of the pack taken by Coffey. Forwards the ball towards centre wing. Corns in front. Wait from behind. Fists the ball out of play. Centre wing, Port Adelaide crowd sensing victory in 1977, the centenary year. Leading by 20 points, can the base come back? Gerlach, Wayne Phyllis, Ebert giving it his all. Down to Cunningham. Out goes the short pass, Granger drops a sitter. Paul Pleaser in support, flanked by Cunningham. Port Adelaide running into attack on the lead is Evans, a perfect pass. Magnificent football. By 15 metre penalty. Port Adelaide running on brilliantly in this final quarter. The Bays giving it their all. But Evans, only now 25 metres out, has six goals. Chance to make himself the mayor of Port Adelaide. Ninth kick. And he drills the centre. Port Adelaide going from strength to strength in the grand final. Seventh goal to Tim Evans. At the 17-minute mark of the grand final, Port Adelaide 17-10, 112, lead the Earl 13-8-86. You're viewing the big replay on Channel 7. 17 and a half minute mark and Port Adelaide lead out now by 26 points. A very handy lead indeed and Glenelg with a superhuman task in front of them. Spry and Wayne Phyllis on the ball. Spry's tap. He's starting to get his taps away. Cunningham, a danger player. Out in front of Tony Giles. All oh, throws it away. Throwing the ball, quite rightly. Peter McInerney to take the free kick. Donnell must get that ball into attack quickly. Seven minutes plus time on to play. And the Bays go straight up in the air. It's a high kick down towards Carey, gets a bad bounce Farqua got Johnson clear, goes over towards that player, on the half forward line, the base need a goal, won't make the distance, in the square Phyllis sets himself, they fly, Jackson off the pack, snaps truly I think he's got a goal the 
Gervais come back. Great goal, the experience of Sydney Jackson then. As the ball came in high, there must have been seven or eight players waiting in the square for the mark. But Jackson read it beautifully in front of the pack. As it came off, onto the left foot. The kick barely made the distance, but he's put a valuable goal on the board for Glenelg. They trail 14-8 to Port 17-10. Centre bounce, Carey's knock away, James couldn't get it clear, McInerney runs the ball into attack, and on the lead, Freddie Phyllis makes no mistake, the Bay's not to be denied, 20 points the difference. Freddie Phyllis can make that lead, 14 points. Looks good, the goal umpire sees it through. 14 points the difference as the Bays fight back. That goal to Freddie Phyllis. Two goals to Freddie Phyllis now. Port Adelaide, 15 goals, uh, sorry, Glenelg, 15-8, trail Port. 17 goals, 10, 20-minute mark, so it's five minutes plus time on to play. Well, when people were just starting to leave the ground, thinking that Port Adelaide had it sewed up, the Bays make their bid at the 20-minute mark. Two quick goals. And the grand final's not over yet. 14 points the difference. At the bounce. Spry and Phyllis again. This time James gathers cleanly. Goes towards the wing. Bruce Leiter's there. Outnumbered. But locks the ball up under the bodies. Just outside the square. Towards centre wing. Phyllis and Spry again. This time Spry takes possession. Max James tears clear towards the forward line. Caldwell and Evans, the bounce of the ball towards Eckerman. Gets a foot to the ball, but offline. One point only. 21 points the difference. Port 17-11, Glenelg 15-8. 15 points, Ted, not 21. Sorry, uh, 15 points, Ian, thank you. Twiggy Caldwell. Towards the half-back flank. Corns with two bites, couldn't quite get there. Poor Pleasure pulled off it. Copping goes short. David Holst towards the center of the ground. Max James in late. Carey spoiled. Ebert. Hand pass into the open space. Corns was there and the boundary line. 15 8 Glenelg, 17 11 Port. A desperate struggle. A tremendous struggle. A great grand final. Wayne Phyllis gets a tap. The handball goes from James towards Belton. Through comes Voigt. A typical dash at the ball. Players throw tired bodies on top. And another bounce. By right, G Max, James looks tired. He, he can, can hardly, hardly raise his gallop. A bounce on the half forward line. Port Adelaide slightly in attack. Spry gets up high. McInerney grabbed there by Paul Pleasure. And once more can't get it clear. Players giving their all. Paul Plesha being sent to the back line. A whole season of sweat and toil. And these are the last closing minutes of 1977. Great mark in defence by Tony Giles, is it? Yes. Coming up very sore. He lobbed on his back. Peter White breaking clear on his flank to help if needed. Tony Giles, 10th kick from the half-back flank. Tony Giles, who came on at, uh, during the second quarter, played well on that half-back flank, as they all have. Leffen in front, the back James couldn't take it. Yes, it's been played to James. No, it's been played to Leffen. No, James. If he can get up to James, take it. He cannot get up to take it. 23 minutes played, two minutes plus time on. In a 15-point march into Port Adelaide. There's been seven goals in this last quarter, Ted, so there could be at least Three to four minutes, or maybe even five of time on. And it gives about seven minutes left in 1977. Gerlach leads, but James kicks longer towards the pocket. All oh, Glenelg, Wayne Phyllis. Takes the mark in the back pocket. Glenelg now need to move the ball again up forward quickly. 
towards the height of Carey and the leap of Corns, and it's over the top at the height of Carey and the pace of Hodgman towards the forward line. But again, Tony Giles stands firm. Sid Jackson under the ball, the pass not good. Tony Giles looks for a lead and can't get one. Port Adelaide haven't got the run at the moment. Up in the air it goes. Granger in front. Corns reads it best, takes the mark. And they'll look to have a bit of a uh, bit more run in their legs, Ian, to me. Hodgman, Ted, they certainly haven't given up 24 minutes into the final quarter, but they've got to score three goals, and they've got three to four minutes to do it. Hodgman, short. Weston, the handball has put Johnson under pressure from Belton. Light there, a chance for Port Adelaide now. Light under pressure too, runs it towards Ebert. Ebert's flanked now by Paul Pleasure. Port Adelaide's going once more. A long kick towards full forward. Chris Herco, Johnson can't get it. No, he's been paid. Peter Johnson paid the mark about 25 metres out. The Sands of 1977 running Port out Port Adelaide have run an extra man in defence, which means there'll be one light in attack, Ian. Closing it down, Ted. On the half forward line. Lehu, Sorrell, Corns. Sorrell comes out with it. Cunningham, short as James finds that player and no doubt James will go back and take more valuable seconds to eke out 1977. Max James almost into time on towards Evans. Twiggy Caldwell comes out of defence. Drives long. 25 minute mark and Glenelg into attack. Carey there fighting. Spray there also on top of the ball and the bounce. Almost on the half-forward flank for Glenelg. What a bruising encounter it's been. No wonder the players are starting to tire as well they might. Nobody goes for the knock. Ebert can't break clear. Hulse does, and then Peter White threads his way through the pack. Jimmy Lee, who gets under it. Glenelg will go back into attack. He's looking for leads. Waits too long. It's out in front of Daryl Rady. Doesn't sit for him. Len Warren through. Locks it up underneath him. Sid Jackson in on top of it. Tony Giles also arrived on the scene and a bounce down between centre and centre wing. One minute of time on play. 15 points of difference still. David Johnston with the ball out towards the flank. Warren gets the bad bounce. Daryl Rady, who's had two bad knocks in the leg. Can he muster enough pace? He does, he gets it out to David Johnson. He can run to the goal square if he wants, but he drives the kick in. It's touched through one point. The Bays needed that goal. 15-9, the Bays, 99 points. Port 17-11, 113, a 14-point margin. Kick in by Phillips. On the lead is Belton. Belton in the back pocket will lock it up a bit more. Hannon runs on, so do does Cunningham. But Belton taking seconds, valuable seconds. Back towards centre wing. It's all copping there. Fisted away by Sorrell. Chance for Blathen. Paul Pleasure going past. Port Adelaide into attack once more. Towards the half forward line. Granger. Johnson back there and the ball out of play once more. Two minutes into time on. 14 points in favour of Port Adelaide. The Magpies hanging on like grim death. Granger exhausted. Everybody exhausted. A tremendous final. Gerlach. Hooks it back, but it's straight to Voigt. Hodgman having a great grand final. Short. Farqua at centre wing. Not a lot of run there from the Bays. They've got to play on quickly. It's going to be short. Hannon throws himself at the ball. Jackson in late. And Hannon goes down. Good solid. Shoulder to shoulder bump. Tony Hannon's OK. Played a fine game. Only a teenager. Standing into the back pocket for the injured Carl Fragamini. And the youngsters got a chance, maybe, of playing in a premiership side in 1977. Brian Cunningham, who's been a good player for Port Adelaide all day, and particularly for the last half, with his 24th kick. Towards the half-forward flank, three Port Adelaide Guernseys there, but Graham Corns pulls in an almost miraculous mark. And the half-back flank as he takes it. Three minutes of time on now, ticked away. The sands of time running out for the Bays. Spry spoiled. Poplicia there. Copping to Hodgman. 
into the open space. Holst into trouble. Bruce Light bumps him out of the play. David Holst, unsighted from the tackle of Light, goes to ground and a bounce necessary. David Holst, badly winded. Peter Mead whistles time on. This will add to the added time in the last quarter. Can't be whistled up, can it? Ian wants to win a time on, of course. A bounce. Comes towards Corns. Into the forward line. Freddie Phyllis, the strength one on that occasion. The strength and the experience. Four minutes of time on played. And 14 points the difference. Freddie Phyllis can make it eight. Ninth kick to Fred Phyllis. Freddie Phyllis has kicked two since going to full forward. Looks pretty good. He's threaded it through. Three goals to Freddie Phyllis and an eight point margin in favour of the Magpies. And four and a half minutes of time on play. Can the Bays get out of this one? John Cale would love to know the answer. What an incredible fight back. Full marks to Glenelg. They looked for all the world that they were gone. Port Adelaide leading by about five goals halfway through the last quarter, but the Bay's courage has fought them back. They're eight points down, five minutes into time on. Two goals will win it for them. Can they do it? At the bounce. The Ruckman, Gerlach and Carey. Carey's tapped down to Hodgman. Over towards the half-forward flank. Rady forced a battle against Bruce Light. Goes in short, looking for Paul Belton, finds that player. Cunningham running into the forward line again. Herco, tall, leaves it behind. Going forward is James. High it goes. Evans there, knocked away by Johnston. Hand passed away by Johnson, comes to Herco. Noddy Voigt's there, the hand pass towards Johnson. Bruce Light intercepts beautifully. He has Evans loose in the pocket and fires to that player. He marks and will take as long as he can to kick the ball. Look at the tension on John Cale's face. In fact, the whole camp of Port Adelaide. This is it. Can it be for John Cale? Imagine what's going through his mind. Seven goals so far to Tim Evans. The kick. He's going across the face of goal and will go out of bounds on the full. Still a margin of eight points only and Graham Corns to try to get Glenelg moving up forward. 31 minutes played in the final term. Corns back towards the half-back line, coughing in there, Leo. Blethen comes out, dribbles it along the line, but once more, valuable seconds ticking by. Ball out of play, full forward pocket. Seven minutes of time on. Port Adelaide, there it is! Port Adelaide in the Premiers in 1977. Centenary year and triumph for John Cale.